Hello, in this video, we're going to learn about comparator operations. These instructions perform a comparison of two values, with the same data type. First instruction is equal. It has double equal sign. Then we have not equal. It's mean a number is greater or less than another number. Next instructions are greater or equal, less or equal, greater than, and less than. We can distinguish each instruction with its sign easily. Also, we have in range instruction. It's used to check, is a number within a specified range? Or the out range instruction is used to check, is a number outside a specified range? Finally, we'll write a program with these instructions, to control a simple traffic lights. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to inform you about all the great content, I have been releasing on the PLC Goods YouTube channel, which includes industrial automation PLC programming, HMI and microcontroller based developments. My name is Syed Reza, and if you enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell, to receive the latest and the greatest content, I will be posting through the channel. Alright, let's start this video. First let me has a counter, which has been told at previous video. As you know, with each positive pulse, like this, the current value will be increased. Also with reset input, we can transfer zero value to CV output. Now, let's see the first comparator instruction. Equality. For each comparator instruction, here, we must determine type of data, which are going to be compared. Here I select integer, like my counter. Alright, this line compares CV value of my counter, which name is counter1, with 10. So when the counter value is equal to 10, this output will be on. Also, on the right side, you can see its FBD program. Next instruction is inequality. For this one, when the counter value is 10, the output will be off, otherwise the output will be on. Here, for equality or inequality instructions, we can exchange their inputs. It's not important, which input is used for counter value or number 10. Now let's see other comparator instructions. Greater or equal, less or equal, greater than, less than. We can detect each with its sign. For example, see the last line. Here, when the counter value is less than 10, this output will be on. Pay attention, for these instructions, if we exchange inputs, the program logic will be changed too. To prevent any mistake, place the first input, on the left side of comparator sign, and the second input on the right side, to see their mathematical expressions. Well, here we have in-range and out-range instructions. At the first line, when the counter value is a number from 5 to 15, I mean 5, 6, to 15. The output will be on. The out-range instruction works inversely. At the second line, the output will be on, if the counter value is not a number from 5 to 15. Let's test some comparators, here, I've inserted an up count counter. On the right side, click on comparator operations. I'm going to insert an inequality instruction.
first I must determine which type of data are going to compare. Let me select double integer for my counter, and also comparator. Here I refer to current value of the counter. And here, I write 10. Now let me assign an output for this line. Also let me use an outrange instruction. Here I select double integer format. As you know if I click here, I can replace this, with similar instructions like in range. Well, let me to complete this line and test this program. As usual, to change an input of my virtual PLC, I must use SIM or force table, but here, because of this block, I can right click on every PLC addresses and modify their values to 1 or 0. Let me do this modifying, with Ctrl plus F2 and Ctrl plus F3 shortcuts. Now, the counter value is 3, which is not equal to 10, so this output is on. Also, 3 is out range 5 to 15, so, the second output is on. Now I can change the current value, to see how these comparators work. You may want to pause this video and try to test and learn comparator instructions. Now let's do a simple project. Here we have two streets, A and B. I want to write a simple program to control two traffic lights, when I press a start push button, just, A street must be open for 20 seconds. During this time, the red light of B street will be on. Then, after 5 seconds, which yellow light will be on for A street, cars, which are at A street, must be stopped behind the red light, and the B street will be open for 10 seconds. After that, the yellow light of B street, will be on for 5 seconds. Then this cycle will be continue, until a stop push button is pressed. Let's start programming. There are several ways to write desired program. For example, it can be written with some pulse timers, but here, I'm going to use only one pulse timer. But I will need to use comparator instructions. First I insert a start contact. Then I need a pulse timer. See here, one cycle of the traffic lights work, last 40 seconds. So, the preset time is 40 seconds.
Also this cycle works frequently, and I know after 40 seconds, the Q output of pulse timer, will has a negative pulse. So I can use this pulse to start my timer again. Now, let me to use a reset timer instruction, and a contact, to stop my timers, every time which I want. Let's test, this part of my program. As you see, when I activate start contact, the timer start its work. After 40 seconds, it works again. Also every time I can reset timer to zero, with the stop contact. Now, let's complete my program. To turn on, the green light of traffic light A, which I call green A, I need detect this period of time, when the current value of timer, is greater than 0 and less than 20 seconds. Let me exit from simulation. So I need two comparator instructions. First I insert a greater than comparator. Change data type to time. At top of that, I refer to elapsed time of timer. At bottom, I write zero. Pay attention, when I stop timer, it's elapsed time reset to zero, which I don't want to turn on any lights. So here I've not used greater or equal operand. Also my time must be less than or equal to 20 seconds. So I use this comparator operand. And finally as you know, this condition will turn on a green light. Pay attention, here is two ways to write program, based on conditions, or based on outputs. Let me explain the first way. First condition turn on green A. Also it turn on the red B. So I can make a branch in my program to turn red B light on. But this way is not true in PLC programming, but why? See next condition, this condition turn on yellow A and red B lights. Now suppose the timer is at 10 second. Based on first condition, the red B must be on, but CPU turn it off. Because of second condition. In other word, 
second condition take priority over first condition. This program must be written based on outputs. I have to use one output for each lights in my program, and find what conditions turn on them. Let me come back to TIA software. Now let me define all input output tags. So, in this network, I'm going to write all conditions which turn on the red B. The first condition is similar previous network. The second condition is when the time is greater than 20 and less than 25 seconds. Alright, this is my program based on outputs. It's expected you able test this program with TIA simulator and watch table, now, let me test it on my PLC. As you see, always, to control two traffic lights, two PLC outputs are always on. In the next video we're going to see what are math functions. Thanks for watching my content, if you have any question on this topic make sure you leave them in the comment section below, and if you can spend a few seconds of your time liking as well as sharing this video, if you enjoyed it, that will mean a lot to me. If you have any suggestions for the channel such as what kind of hardware or software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that in the comment section. See you next time. Bye bye.